this lesson, I wanna show you four unconventional ways to practice rhythm. This stuff will show you some riffs, some licks, and just everything that you need to become a rhythmic musical guitar player. My name's Will Ripley. You're tuning into Campfire Guitar Star. All right, so let's dive in. I'm stoked for this one. It's gonna be a good one. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a wearable metronome. So I thought that would be a good visual representation for you as well. I've also got my phone over here, which syncs in with this thing. So I know I'm kind of like a gearhead with everything. So I have a, a fancy metronome, but you can have the classic style metronome. You can have, uh, you, did you know that you can actually go on Google and type in metronome and Google has a built-in metronome into the search results now. It's a pretty awesome little tool as well. Uh, and then of course, there's just ordinary apps on our phone. Uh, so we will be using a metronome today if you haven't picked that up already. But I'm also gonna just show you kind of these four unconventional ways to, to practice rhythm. We're not gonna be sitting down and working on like a scale, you know, or anything like that. Uh, we're gonna be working on actual music. We're gonna be uh, integrating musical things like riffs and licks into the metronome, as well as just some tips and tricks and just an alternate approach to getting better at rhythm. You know, uh, you, can, you can learn a million scales, a million chords. If you don't have those together in a rhythmic way, you're just not gonna be a very musical sounding guitar player. So we really wanna get a lot of rhythm injected into our playing. And so tip number one for you is to play rhythmic music especially, and when, you know, maybe you can think of this right off the top of your head too. When I'm thinking about rhythmic music, I'm thinking about funk, stuff that makes people shake their booties and get out on the dance floor too. You know, rhythmical, danceable music. So I wanted to show you a couple of riffs. One riff is by James Brown called The Payback, and it's actually the bass line to the song. And, we're, and so what that means is it's gonna be very beginner friendly, it's very simple, and it's all about focusing on the rhythm and the groove. I'm also gonna show you that Rage Against the Machine song that I was playing on the intro. Because here's the thing, from a young age, I was just totally attracted to really rhythmical music. But not all people are. So what I would recommend for you is to play some blues, play some funk, or at least play some music that is deeply influenced by blues or funk. Because that style of music really gets the people out on the dance floor, really gets bodies moving, and that's the kind of stuff that you want to be able to integrate into your guitar playing no matter what style. Because even maybe unrhythmic music or, or undanceable music still has a very strong tempo, a very strong rhythm to it. So whatever you play really needs to have that strong bond to rhythm. And playing blues and funk can really help you with that. So let's go ahead and dive into the first riff. So as mentioned, it's a James Brown song. So it's a really simple bass line. It just starts on the fourth fret and goes to the sixth fret. And beginners are welcome to hit this up. And you know what? And it doesn't even matter how easy it is. It's just all about focusing on the rhythm. So hang with me here. And, uh, and then we'll get into a more complex thing in a minute. But so four and six, and it goes like this. And then there's a rest, okay? So the cool thing is, it's like a six minute song, and yeah, there are some rhythmic changes and some things like that, but if you listen close to the bass guitar in the Payback by James Brown, um, you will hear that bass line and it is thunderous. It is just like booty shaking music. So let's go ahead and just try that out, me and you, just for a minute. We're going at 80 beats per minute, okay? So as you can see and here, we got 80 beats per minute going one, I'll start on the beat here, so on the high tick. One, two, ready, go. Three, four. and so on and so forth. Now, I hope you're not bored by that because what I need you to do is really find the interest in that and find the focus and dedication that that simple riff requires. Because 
that riff, when played right, will get everybody out on the dance floor, everybody's shaking their booties, and, it, and everybody's having a really good time. But if you play it unrhythmically, you can guess it. Nobody's coming out on the dance floor to dance to your music, right? So really see if you can find the energy and the focus required to really make that pop, to really make it sound awesome. And we're gonna talk about this more in a minute, but uh, is to play along with songs, but we'll get into that more in a minute. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is, do you see how, like, and you could probably hear my foot tapping, I'm getting a lot of body movement involved here. I'm like getting the rooster neck going, you know, and I'm, uh, and I'm like really thinking hard about that. I'm, I'm getting my shoulders involved and get my whole, it's almost like I'm dancing in my seat when I'm playing. And like, think about a guitarist like Tom Morello, who we're gonna talk about in a minute, uh, or Angus Young from ACDC, I'm playing the SG today. So think about those guys, like when you see them play live, they are rocking out so hard. Their whole physical being is just like integrated with the moment. They're sweat, like pouring in sweat just you know sweating bullets uh, they're jumping they're dancing they're running right so a lot of times and i've seen this a lot with our beginner guitar students is people are really stiff sitting in their chair they're just like you know playing their songs and, and nothing's moving except their fingers and it's like okay first of all let's relax and let's see if we can get our bodies involved with the instrument okay so uh, the next riff I want to show you is Bomb Track by Rage Against the Machine. Now, keep in mind that tip number one here is to play rhythmical music. So, Rage Against the Machine is basically a mixture of funk and hip hop and rock. So, as a young kid playing guitar, I just loved that, just like that energy and that the big riffs and the big groove that they brought. And if you've watched some Rage Against the Machine footage, they're getting not only the dance floor packed, but they're getting like 60,000 people jumping up and down at the same time. You know, and it's and really through some really very simple riffs. This one's a little bit more complex because we got two parts and there's kind of like a quick little alternate picking thing. So I wanted to make sure to throw this one in. This one is also sitting roughly at about 80 beats per minute. Make sure to grab the tabs for this lesson. I'll have the tabs in all the show notes. You'll find a link to download the tabs uh, in, the link, uh, in a link below. But here's the riff, okay? I've got some more tips to hop into. So. Um, but yeah, so I'll go through this relatively quickly, just play it a couple times and then we'll, we'll hop in. So one, two, three, go. <laughs> Switch to the next part. So a super big banger of a riff, two parts there for you. Uh, it's a great thing to play along with the metronome. All right, so that's gonna round out tip number one is to listen to more rhythmic music, especially blues and funk, and any music that's been influenced by funk and blues. So James Brown song, The Payback, super beginner friendly and very focused on the rhythm and the groove. There's a good one for you. And also this Rage Against the Machine song, Bomb Track, which is deeply influenced by funk. You know, of course, with elements of hip hop and rock in there as well. So that's a great riff. Now, like I said, this is gonna slide right into tip number two for improving your rhythm, which is play along with rock stars. So let me ask you, who has the best rhythm on earth? If I were to answer that, it would be rock stars. Rock stars have the best rhythm on earth because they've been the ones that are in the studio, 
you know, tracking with metronomes and producing music that, you know, gets us all moving and gets us out on the dance floor and, and gets us, you know, shaking our fists and, and, and jumping up and down. So those guys are the ones that have the best rhythm. So if you can play along with the recordings, that's going to be your absolute best method for improving your rhythm. Because if you can play along with rock stars, if you can play along with the recordings, that means that you are doing something right, my friend. Because I think a lot of people, when they learn a song, they just kind of play it by themselves with no reference. They don't even play it with a metronome and they don't play it with the original recording. But make it a point to sit down and play those riffs that I've just shown you, for instance, with the actual original recordings, okay? That's gonna do so much for you and so much for your rhythm because all of a sudden, you're gonna have to keep up with the rock stars, okay? And if you can lock in with the rock stars, then you know that you're doing something right, okay? And you know that your rhythm is getting tight. And this can actually be done in a couple different ways. One way that I love to practice this as is to just put on the radio, like the literal lit radio, or satellite radio, or just like your Spotify playlist on, sp on shuffle, or whatever the case is, just to get a scattering mess of songs coming at you, and just to play along with the songs. And that could be just improvising, or maybe you're trying to pick up some of those parts by ear, which of course is also great practice. But playing along with songs, playing along with the radio, improvising, and just playing along with rock stars is gonna be so, so beneficial for your playing. Also a great way to do this is to of course play with jam tracks. One of my favorite jam tracks YouTube site is called Now You Shred. And in fact, I pay the guy five bucks a month because I love his jam track so much and I just wanna like help that guy continue to pr produce such awesome jam tracks. So check out Now You Shred. He produces all kinds of classic rock stuff. But play my point is that playing with jam tracks is great because all of a sudden we have that platform where we can kind of improvise and work on our scales and stuff like that. And also I wanna just throw a different aspect towards you for practicing along with jam tracks. A lot of us guys, you know, we go on there, we just like shred and we just, you know, wank on the guitar, you know, and just, just go for it, which is cool. And I'm guilty of this. In fact, I was just doing it yesterday and I love it. It's great. But also a great way to practice is to actually play some chords along with the jam tracks, you know, cause we have this stripped down track with no vocals and things like that. And just where we can really focus on the basic elements of a song, like the bass, drums, guitars, keyboards. And then we can really just focus in on some basic rhythms. And if you caught my, my practice regime lesson I released last week, you'll, uh, you'll find on there uh, the five main rhythms, which are your whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and 16th notes. Okay, and actually that was six. <laughs> Anyways, so you can focus on your basic, basic rhythms along with jam tracks as well and just really zoom in. It's just like a really fun way to practice and a really just musical way to practice your rhythm. All right, number three is to put the groove into the metronome. Now, like I said, I'm not a big fan of, you know, suggesting to, to students to just put on a metronome and, and play scales, even though I do that and I think you should too and, and I don't want to discount that. But what I'm going to talk about here is putting the groove into the metronome. So I'm just going to jam here for a second for you. So here we go. There's the 80 beats per minute thing again. You got the visual representation here. So I'm just going to go ahead and riff. and so on and so forth. I can tell you, that's one of the most fun ways to practice rhythm, which is to put the groove in the metronome. So you can grab basic chords, you can grab just random notes, 
and get something musical going on. And again, it can, come, it can be something as simple as that James Brown riff that we talked about. Two, three, four. And maybe you just want to span off it like that. Right? But that might be a good launch pad. So putting the groove into the metronome is one of the most fun ways to practice. And it will really challenge you because all of a sudden you'll be going for a lick that you maybe feel you're like you're really confident in playing, but then you fall off the metronome, right? And you'll know all of a sudden it's just like you're disconnected from the metronome. It's like, whoa, 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 reel it back in. What happened there? Okay. And actually this is a kind of a side note. And one, one thing I wanted to mention was like when you fall off the metronome, See if you can reel it back in, but then try that thing again, you know? Try, try that area where you slipped off the metronome. See if you can repeat that section and actually play it with musical prowess this time through, right? So I wanna just encourage you to, to uh, put the groove into the metronome, find those zones where you fall off, and then work on that section, okay? Come back to it, see if you can pounce on it and play it like a pro. All right, that brings me to tip number four, which is to listen back to yourself. On your phone, we all have uh, basically recorders on, on these, or you can record yourself on a video playing along with the metronome or, or playing along with these songs. Something really interesting happens when we change our viewpoint from, from the guitar. Because like, when we have our guitar sitting in our laps, we have this one type of experience. But as soon as you listen back from a different perspective, like looking at a video, or when you listen back to yourself, you all of a sudden are just viewing yourself from a different perspective. And that different perspective is very interesting because, because it's so different, you pick up different things and you'd be like, whoa, whoa, hey, I was just off there. Or, oh, that didn't sound too good. Or, oh man, I thought I was playing that perfectly, but it doesn't sound perfect at all. So as you can tell, looking around me, I've got all this musical equipment and you can see microphones and all that kind of stuff behind me. So over my career as being a guitarist, I've recorded and you know, been in studios and recorded demos and jam tracks and all the, all the good stuff, whether it's for lessons or for my personal stuff, the bands I've been working on. So I'm always recording in a program called Pro Tools. And we're almost always recording to a click you know, or to a grid and a lot of times we're listening back and hearing, oh, I rushed that. Oh, I'm behind there, right? Or, oh man, that, that drum fill is totally off or whatever. So, but just listening back to yourself is something that you gotta do. In fact, do it today. You know, like I said, record yourself playing with the metronome so you can hear yourself and watch yourself play, or like, just like I'm doing here on a video. And in fact, I'm kind of thinking like, as, I, as I'm teaching you this, that just hearing myself play with the metronome like I was doing today, riffing and playing some of those riffs and stuff like that, it's gonna be interesting for me and helpful for me to just watch this video of myself playing with, with the metronomes, okay? So that's tip number four and something I wanted to get to you too. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of this. Hopefully you'll pick up all four of these tips. Maybe you're doing some of these already, Go ahead and drop me in a comment below if you feel like you're doing one of these already or which one of these four you really feel like you're gonna integrate into your practice or any other ways that you see benefiting your rhythm and feel free to share those. I'd, I'd love to see your comments. So uh, make sure to grab the PDF. They'll have the tabs, the show notes, everything that you need to go along with this lesson. And of course, until the next one, keep on ripping it up. See you then.